Hi, this is uh, Zheng Ao Liu. I'm the social professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering in Texas A&M University. In this short presentation, I will talk about building energy modeling 101. So we're going to start from the introduction and then talking about benefit of BAM for building design and operation, followed by BAM to inform the building design and operation. We're also going to briefly talk about BAM fundamentals and some output examples. Uh, in the end, we're briefly talking about some common building energy modeling software with some cost information. What's the building energy modeling? BAM. BAM is a physical based software simulation of building energy use. A BAM program takes input such as geometry, construction, lighting, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, component efficiency, control strategy, etc. It also takes descriptions of the building use and operation, including schedules for occupancy, lighting, plug loads, and the thermostat settings. A BAM program combines the inputs with the local weather and use physical equation to calculate thermal loads, system response, and resulting energy use, along with the related metrics such as occupant thermal comfort. So what's the benefit of the BAM? There are benefit to building design and operation. For instance, you can use the BAM for compliance. This includes lead, leadership in energy and environment design, and also ASHRAE, American Society of the Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Condition Engineers. Building energy modeling also are used for design trade analysis. The BAM was performed in many design firms to assess the dif different designs during the operation stage, there are also there's lots of the studies use the building energy modeling. For instance, BIM can be used to predict unused data information, also can be used to help optimization. So why we need a BIM? Building design and operation procedure is a total building performance procedure. These mandates, we're going to have a fully understand of building special, thermal, indoor air quality, visual, acoustic, and the building integrity. In terms of the building design, the building design is a large based design. This required we have a building energy modeling to help us have a framework to ensure comprehensive and integrated design consideration for high performance and a sustainable solution. For the building operation, we will need have some diagnostic methodology to measure the building performance. We need also to evaluate impact and uh, establish a benchmark, which now can be assisted by building energy modeling. So here is the example, how we can use building energy modeling BAM to inform the design. So technical potential can be informed by modeling. So in here, the example trying to illustrate what's the maximum level of the energy savings for this building, given today's technology, if we use the building energy modeling. So current energy use, energy use index is 90K BTU per square foot per year. After uh, we implement some energy efficient measures, this EUI is going to be reduced. Through the building energy modeling, we'll be able actually to assess what's the energy potential. 
through those energy efficient measures. For instance, here we covered a few energy efficient measures such as waste cooling site point, advanced building envelope, reduce internal heat gain, cooling efficiency. Through building energy modeling, we'll be able to estimate savings for those different energy efficient measures. In here, the example shows estimate energy savings for cooling is about 65% and then total tackle potential in the end is 30 kPTO per square foot per year. For modeling procedure, we normally have pre-design, uh, schematic design, design development, and the construction document. So BIM is playing the different roles in this different stage. For the pre-design, the design team established the building program and all the project requirement. The building energy modeling is going to help us to establish a line team around energy savings goals. We also can use energy modeling technical potential analysis to understand potential of the building. We will also can perform modeling to inform early design decisions. Last, the energy modeling can help team understand if the design will work or not. For the schematic design, and then we need to be timely. Decision making can help quickly. If modeling is time constrained, we need to consider simplified schedule, spaces, HVAC zones, and window geometry. We also need to address the design component um, that are decided upon in schematic design, for instance, like floor to floor height and space layout to maximize the daylight use potential. You can use building energy modeling to help you to understand effect from those uh, uh, different floor to floor height and space layout. Energy modeling also can help us to respond and leverage the project specifics. For design development stage, the building energy model can help us to right size the system, size most of system to just meet the design nodes. Also can help us to inform value engineering decisions. For instance, it's going to help us to analyze the impact of the value engineering options Last, the unique stage, building energy modeling can help us inform the design relative to fine-tuning of the efficient strategies. For instance, you could have different shading characteristics. Um, last one, for the um, beam to inform design, um, we're going to use the beam help us to uh, submit lead uh, document and other uh, similar uh, documentation. So BIM is going to help us ensure project efficiency strategy remain in the design stage, finalize the performance and savings estimate, and then document savings for lead and other uh, requirements. BIM also can inform uh, operation. For instance, we can use model-based performance monitoring to help us better manage uh, building energy consumption. Uh, in this case, you will have the building reference model from the building energy model, and then you will have actual data from building management system. These two data streams is going to be compared, and then you can see uh, the performance um, for this uh, building. In this case, we're going to do the comparison between the data from uh, actual building and the data from the outputs of the building energy models. And then if you see any difference, for instance, in here we see the difference. Uh, the red line is measured, uh, the blue line is to simulate.
you can see the difference. The difference is caused by uh, lights was on overnight, and also there were free cooling opportunity. The actual building is not uh, utilized while the modeling is capturing. So uh, this simple case uh, shows the savings in this week at the building level for lighting is about 8.5%, uh, for chiller is about 5%. Um, in the next few slides, I'm going to briefly talking about some modeling fundamentals. The first thing is for modeling is to understand the building geometry as shown uh, in these slides. Um, the second thing we need to understand is the building construction. It's going to include a wall and a roof. So uh, on these slides, there are a few type of walls and the roofs. And then um, we also need to consider different glazing, um, different windows when we uh, build up model. And then uh, in terms of windows, uh, the different glazing property uh, in terms of the U value, uh, solar heat gain coefficient, and then the visible light transmission factor only is going to be considered during the modeling process. For the building internal heat gains, this includes lighting, occupancy, plug nodes, and for the peak power and occupancy, this is the uh, very important input for the building modeling. And then fraction schedule, uh, normally we will have a daily, weekly, and annual occupancy schedule, and also we could have hourly fraction marker for the peak values. And then for the fraction of the heat gains to space, we will assign a proportional amount of heat to space. For the mechanical system, um, building models can cover a variety of the, uh, deep, the building um, HVAC system, like central system, chillers, terminal units, boilers, uh, etc. And other um, input related to the modeling is the weather data. Weather data is very important for the building energy modeling. Um, building design condition for peak heating and cooling calculation is going to depend on the weather and building performance simulation also is going to depend on weather. Uh, we will have a different type of weathers like typical hourly weather data, actual hourly weather data, and the future all the weather data is depend on what you're going to use uh, for the building energy modeling. In terms of output examples, uh, in these slides, we show actually two different uh, output example. One is a pie chart. Uh, so the different components like uh, contribution uh, to the energy and the use. And then the right hand side actually shows the potential cooling load reduction. So uh, through modeling, you can see um, some advanced technology will lead to a load reduction. And then uh, the output can tell you uh, exactly uh, how much load reduction is going to happen for different components. So evaluate the heating and cooling node breakdown uh, to identify impactful load reduction measure is very important because this is going to help you to downsize your HVAC system. For common building energy modeling software, we have um, different type of the software. Uh, some of actually public funded, so they are free. Some are actually from private sector, so uh, you need to pay some uh, license. Um, so right now, the most popular uh, free um, building energy modeling software are IDOE based uh, um, software and NG Plus. In summary, what BAM can do for your building? You can use the BAM to compare different design or retrofit option. You also can use the BAM to calculate complex technologies um, for instance, that's passive buildings, thermal energy storage, uh, advanced control options. Uh, so those um, technology can be assessed by using building energy modeling. And then 
You also can use the BAM to help you design heating and cooling system. And then you can use the BIM to inform operation. For instance, use the models to deploy model-based performance monitoring. This concludes this uh, short video for building energy modeling 101. Thank you.